Um, you're looking refreshed and coffeeed up and excited for two more sessions before we let you go for a lunch break as well. And I'm very, very honored to be introducing our next two speakers. And the session around super kids and how do you as associations help excite and energize the youth to get involved in your associations? And more importantly, how do the youth help your associations solve the world's biggest problems that, you, that you're trying to do. So I'm very excited to introduce His Excellency, Dr. Abdullah Al-Karam. He is the Chairman of the Board of Directors and the Director General of the Knowledge and Human Development Authority, known as KHDA here in Dubai. And they are responsible for the quality and growth of Dubai's private education sector, including early learning centers, schools, universities and training industries. And I've known Dr. Abdullah for the last 16, 17 years. We were trying to figure it out. Um, certainly longer than Ali has been born, I think, is going to be the answer. Um, and he still has the same level, if not more, passion and energy for the world of education. And I'm also honored to introduce Alia Al-Mansouri. She is known as a young Emirati scientist. She's 15 years old with a probably a much uh, older head on her shoulders. She's passionate about space, science, and technology. Uh, reading scientific journals, science fiction movies, and books, her dream is to be one of the first astronauts to set foot and raise the UAE flag on the red planet Mars. So I don't know about you, but that makes me feel a little bit like my my annual goals and ambitions need a little bit of a push-up um, for 2018. So please put your hands together, give a very warm welcome to Dr. Abdullah Al-Karam and Alia. To be honest, um, of all the prep that we did for this uh, conference, the most exciting uh, phone call I had was with Alia, um, because I was a little bit blown away. We didn't get to meet each other. We were yeah. over the phone, and I kind of like said, so what is a super kid? Because that's the title of this conference, and, yeah. and how do you describe yourself as a super kid, or do you even like that title? We heard from Susan that we don't like titles and boxes for the next generation. Um, I think the title Super Kid um, is a title for every single kid in the world, all around the world internationally. Uh, because every single kid has a dream, has an ambition. If it was to get a better grade on an exam, or to go to Mars, or to do something that no human has ever done before. Every single kid has a dream and an ambition and a passion, and I think that's what makes them super. Um, yeah. Fantastic, wow, I've got goosebumps all over <laughs> again. <laughs> Um, when did you first realize you were passionate about science and technology and where the world's going? I guess I actually don't remember exactly when, but I do remember as being like a very young kid asking my brother who was in university, he's way older than me, so I would ask him questions about science and genetics and space and I was always interested in like Star Wars and all of these science fiction books and movies. Um, and I guess that's what made me really interested in science itself. Okay. So, I mean, I'm going to come to Dr. Abdullah in a moment because I know one of his challenges is how do we get inside Alia's head? You know, um, that's actually the real mission of this session. How do we all understand what this beautiful young woman is thinking and how do we help uh, leverage that? But before we go to that, just going to dig in a little bit more. Um, what's the role of your family been in enabling you to, to kind of like have these dreams and ambitions? I think the most um, part or role that my family played for me is that they supported me through everything. Um, I had phases, phases where I was so like interested in art and maybe other things not like science, and they would support me through that as well. They supported me through every single phase I ever had. Um, I remember one time I wanted to be like, um, like many different things, I want to be an artist, I wanted to be in the army. I, there are so many phases <laughs> of Alia, and they supported me through all of that, and they continue to support me to this day, and okay. um, I'm really thankful for them. And I think your mum's here as well, yeah. so thank you very much for being a glorified taxi all of the time, and, and allowing <laughs> Alia to come and share her story with us. Before I go to Dr. Abdullah and education, what do you see the role of education is in helping you live your dreams? 
And are they helping you right now? <laughs> um, We're going to be, be controversial. Be <laughs> yeah. So I think that education definitely plays a really big role. Um, and I think it plays a big role because it determines whether it's going to give the youth the ability by enabling them to do different things and by giving them opportunities um, to go out of this box that the whole world has put them in. I think you know the, the world they put us in, especially us as the youth in this generation as well, that they put us in this box and they tell us like, you can't do this because you haven't graduated school or you can't do this because you don't have a degree or you don't know anything about this, so just don't go there. Um, and I, I'm not saying that this is necessarily happening in the UAE because we see a lot of um, involvement from the ministries um, and from the government that are enabling the youth Mm -hmm. um, even more, um, especially here in the UAE. And I think I'm really grateful for that. But I think there should be um, more involvement from the education center in giving opportunities that are bigger than just, um, you know, students or youth going out there and sort of having to work really hard to get these. I think there are some things, for example, like I know many, many students who have very big ambitions and they have really good ideas for researches that I even looked up, they don't even exist, like inventions and researches. And I think all it takes is just a bit of um, support and facilities to help facilitate or give um, these ideas, um, like elevate them and okay. give them a chance in the real world. So Dr. Abdullah, you shook your head when we said, are we doing the right things to help Alia in education right now? And I know we had a great conversation about, you know, how do you stay ahead of 15-year-olds yeah. like Alia? So how do we get inside her head and what do you think the world of education and the UAE education is doing to help? Well, we're doing a few good things, mm -hmm. okay? And we, I think, need to do more of other newer things. So I think going back to what Alia started saying, her passionate, her, her, what she want to do, is if I little bit maybe take you back to what education is supposed to do, mm -hmm. which is not doing today. <laughs> and I always find it useful for you to find the purpose of anything in life to pick up the Latin dictionary, for example, because most of the stuff or those terminologies were coined around that time before and after. So recently I picked up the, the Latin dictionary look for the word education. When these guys invented such a thing or coined, what, what did they mean out of it? So it had something like educare in, in mm -hmm. Latin, but it says in English, quote unquote, to bring out from within. To bring out from within. Okay, if that is the purpose of education, are we doing that today? Okay, you're shaking your head. Right <laughs> We're actually doing exactly the opposite. We are putting in. <laughs> okay, this is the formula. Fine, you get it. Here's the exam. Make sure I've done a good job. Not you, me. Mm -hmm. So this is actually, it sort of changed because of, you know, back and then maybe in the last hundred years, people went to mainstream education, educate more people, you know, assembly line sort of uh, approach to things. This is where I think we sort of, Lost it. Mm -hmm. Lost it. <laughs> it. Lost it. It done, us, it. it done us very good as our generation. I mean, we are sitting here speaking, having homes and having good jobs or whatnot. So for us, it's okay. I think for this generation, it's not. Because it's not bringing out from within. It's not listening. It's, it's telling you this is what we want. So as, I mean, as Alia said, for example, will you, you cannot do this, you cannot do this, you cannot do. What is the thing that telling you you can do? For example, take today. You go to classrooms, you cannot, uh, at workplace, you cannot work without Wi Fi. Right? Mm -hmm, and yeah. the exam, can you use your Wi Fi and internet? At workplace, we're saying work with each other, we need teams. Try that in your exam. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to, let me tell you that. Right? <laughs> yeah. And most importantly, at work, we recognize failure and we reward failure. You do that in the school? No, you don't. I so, would have done really well if that had been allowed. Yeah. <laughs> so my point in here, is I think it's, it's good, but not for this generation, and not for what's coming to us. What's coming to our way? What are the future? What's the changes that can take place? I think the changes is going to come our way in the next 20 years, 
is the changes, more than the changes we have seen for the last 300 years, mm -hmm. if not even more. We living faster day every day. I promise you one thing, that you will, you will never have to live through another slow day as today. <laughs> so all of this happening, all this coming our way, is the education system is preparing, helping, encouraging you to do that? It's not today. Okay. That's why we have jobs. That's why we have jobs, <laughs> because we've still got a job for a number of years. So, so, Alia, how do you think associations can help you? And you're a member of an association, and yeah, to a certain extent, yeah, yeah. and you're, you're contributing and volunteering at an association. And by the way, we're going to give you a challenge in a moment, so you need to listen carefully to this answer. But how do you think associations and these other bodies can help supplement, maybe, what you're getting in education, or help us get out from within what you already have to offer? Um, I think the most important thing uh, for uh, associations to do is to give more opportunities. And I think that's not something that we see every single day, that um, an association would give a job to a 16-year-old. Maybe that's not very common. But if every single one of you here today sits down with another person my age, they will feel the same way you felt on that phone call. because. Honestly, I'm not trying to brag, but this generation is pretty awesome. And <laughs> we can do. <laughs> you are. <laughs> and we can do a lot of things, and we have a lot of ideas. We just need this like, extra push from the associations to give us the opportunities to shine and to make the world a better place. So before, a bit later, I'm going to talk about your, your um, space experiment that you're doing, because you told me you couldn't tell me the results when I spoke to you last time, otherwise you'd have yeah. to kill me. So I'm passionate to find out about that. But before we get to that stage, if you could change one thing in the world, what would you change? Or what would you create? What would you solve? Um, the one thing in the world that I would try to solve is people not having hope in other people. I think hope is the most quality that is important to every single human being. And having hope is the most important thing ever because if you lose hope in people, it's like losing hope in everything else in life. You need to be hopeful that what's coming is gonna be better. You need to be hopeful that what you're doing is making a difference and I think that's very important. Fantastic, well that blew me away from a, from a point of uh, thinking about, you know, I'd be thinking how do I you know, make chocolate not fattening. Um, and other things like that, and there you were solving and creating hope. So um, what I'm going to do now is set out a challenge, if you're all comfortable with the time. And here's the challenge on the tables to all of you. And where you don't have many people, where your friends have left you, I can see down the front. Join the other table where there's some more uh, people around. And here's the challenge to you. We want you to answer a question, and maybe you can throw the question up on the screen for me so I have it up there as well. Um, we want to answer the question. On your table, I'm only giving you five minutes. This is a five-minute brainstorm. Um, identify one idea, particularly if you're from associations. Please make that, this real, okay? Don't make this fake. Make this real. One idea on how you could ex uh, get the youth excited and involved with your association or associations. We'll be coming around to get your ideas. You've heard the brilliance of 15-year-old Alia. You've heard that there are more super kids and amazing youth out there that want to get involved. What could be the things that you do? And please be specific. Don't just say employ them, let them be volunteers. Let's get really specific about what you think you could do because I've got two judges up here who are gonna see whether your ideas are any good. So five minutes, go. Okay, so I'm gonna wander around and just make sure that they're not talking about the latest football score or something okay. like that. Yeah. Is that okay? You want to wander around as well? Perfect. Yeah, I'll do that. You do the same? Okay. And we're coming to listen. <laughs> Just coming to check. I don't know. Um, I think you should the most important thing to think about. Hello.
Okay, I'm going to give you one more minute. I've got three or four amazing ideas. Um, so let's see whether you have uh, something to contribute. Clap twice if you can hear me. Clap three times if you can hear me. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're all back and focused and attention. I'm going to ask our, our distinguished speakers to come back up, although they were busy stimulating ideas. And I'm going to ask from people to, who have ideas to share some of those ideas. I'm going to start with Colleen, whose name I got down here. So where are the mic runners? Oh, oh there. we're going to go there first, and then we're going to go to Colleen. Fantastic. Please say your name and if you're from an association, the association you're from. Uh, I am Auni Kashogi with the uh, um, Human Factors and Ergonomics Society, GCC chapter. And our table is on your team. And uh, our uh, solution is to give you the problem and trust your solution. <laughs> so we're going to give all our problems, which is fantastic. We might need to define them. And actually, Colleen, yours was similar in a way, but actually perhaps with a bit of a, a definition around how we could do it. Good morning. My name is Colleen McKenna Tucker. I'm here representing the International Insurance Society. We're an organization that um, that represents all sectors of the insurance industry. And before I start, I just want to say I'm proud to say we had a 15-year-old intern at our most recent event in London. Fantastic. Um, so the idea that we developed as a team was to identify an issue that your, in, the industry you represent has. For example, in my case, I could say something like climate change or economic inequality. <laughs> and partner with schools um, to, uh, to solicit responses from the school as to how our industry might address these issues and to select from those responses a winning team that would then come to the conference and present their ideas before our audience. Alia, what do you think? So you're invited to come and come up with a solution that will solve climate change or a particular problem of climate change. Your team is accountable to come back to a body of climate change or insurance experts or whatever else it might be and look at it from your perspective. I think that's very important. And adding on to that, I think it's really important to have in every subject, for example, um, in the textbook, to have a question like that and to have you try to solve these questions as you're doing the lesson relating to the different types of um, jobs that you can uh, be employed when, in when you grow up. And I think that's really important that, um, and it means a lot that you trust the youth to come up with solutions to very difficult problems like climate change. And um, I think that we got this. Okay. Yeah. Other, where's the mic? Fantastic. Yep. 
Oh, and please stand up and introduce yourself to us. Hi, Abdullah Yusuf uh, with Dubai Business Event. So 10 years ago, um, I think we were talking about how to empower women and one of the solutions that many countries and many organizations came uh, with was having women on board. So if we look at the same problem and ask ourselves, can we empower youth and have youth on board? So a seat for youth to rep be represented on board of organization, government entities, if UAE can do it and allow um, a minister of youth to be presented on the UAE cabinet, why not um, other organization as well? So, Do Dr. Abdullah, in, in reality though, you're not going to let them out of school to come and work on that board. So how do we create that environment in which they're allowed to work on a board? And how do we protect children as well so that they aren't necessarily, the youth aren't necessarily abused through that process? Well, Alia is here out of school, right? How did she... I have an exam, so have that's an exam. You have exams. <laughs> She's passed them already. No, I don't think there is anything, there is any law that forces the kid to stay in the classroom. I think what we look, for example, in Dubai education, we go and evaluate the outcome. Mm -hmm. What did Alia know? What did she gain? What did she learn from last year to this year? Now, how did she acquire that knowledge is people think it's only going to be in the classroom and through the book and that is not the best that's that's you teach them how to do this formula and that's at the best they will do that so we if, if the school decided to take Alia to work in companies or youth on board whatever format as long as they learn as, as long as they acquire the knowledge and the skills to do then the job is done better than just sitting in the classroom so and I don't think Going down the road, the future is the best learning happen in the classroom, in the schools, vis-a-vis -vis the teacher or the book. I don't think that is going to be the, the, the learning of the future. It's going to be in the open space. And I think you rightly said, because it's only when, we, only when we are presented by questions and asked to find answers. I must add to that one, let's start asking new questions. So you can find the new answers. The questions we know, we know the answer to them, whether they work or they don't, that's another issue. So I, I, I answer to your question, I don't think there's any, anything that forces somebody to sit on a chair for six, seven hours. So what's great is for associations that are here in Dubai and have your offices in Dubai, the big question would be to you, how are you going to embrace that? How are we going to engage, certainly in this environment, and get youth more involved in your association. Other ideas that Tables had? Just raise your hand so I can see if you had some ideas. I know I've got another, there's another question down here with the lady at the front. Okay, oops. Yes, I mean, you've got a question for Alia and a question for Dr. Abdullah, I'm aware of that. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm happy about Alia, uh, your, what you talked before, but the answer about that, I was thinking for you, uh, too much homework in the schools coming to the house and it doesn't allow the kids to live their childhood which I, I was answered to you the homework should be done in the school for them to bring have a time or the experience uh, after school in their house and playing or, or uh, be together with their friends and bring the next day fresh and new ideas to their classrooms this is uh, the answer that I was giving to you before, which I really want you to keep in mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, that I'm keeping uh, teachers, in mind, but there is nothing in the regulations. Nobody is forcing a school to give a homework. But, but it's so much homework every day. <laughs> I think there should and be I'm a regulation. Uh, Sorry, one I second. <laughs> Let's let Alia, uh, I appreciate where we're at. Alia, what do you think from a, from a homework and perspective? Irrelevant, irrelevant, I feel. I think that homework is restricting. And um, yes, there is no regulation that says schools should give out homework, but do we see a school that isn't? There isn't. Mm -hmm. So that should mean that there is a regulation going out there that's not, that doesn't exist, but for some reason people think it is, and that should change. And another thing is that homework shouldn't be this conventional writing on book, answering questions, fill in the blank, write this equation. It shouldn't be like that. It should be come up with a new idea on how we can use this in real life, yes. and then tomorrow in school, come and speak about it. Yes. Maybe that would help um, 
think yeah, of new to, ideas. To, new to make more programs and more like encourage them to have their own ideas and participate and things that they're going to use in real life mm -hmm. to make their workplace more happy. Okay. Because what they learn in the school is things like every day, every year is the same thing for the new student. It's not like idea, it's not like something you, seven, seven hours you're gonna sit there for something, for a, pay, a piece of paper that you don't even use it when you are in your regular work day. Okay. I just wish some change in that. <laughs> so didn't, it did, Rome didn't get built in a day, I understand. No, yeah. no, but I think the fact is, look, you, you, Alia goes to private school, right? It's not government school, nobody. If she doesn't like a certain school, there will be another school who is f a school that is homework free. There is school. There is all choices. Mm -hmm. This is not one central government system of schooling. You get the choice. There are schools that are more green schools. There are more schools than that. And you'll see more coming your way. So it's not by regulation forbidding them from doing it. It's, it's, this is more okay. of engineering. Of, of, of but, but does, okay, but does that actually take us to the point that many of you, when I walked around, couldn't actually think of how to tackle this question because you don't know how to speak to the youth? Because it's at a, I mean, chatting to, it's like, how do, I, how do we have that conversation? How do we attract them? How do we connect to them? So if you don't have solutions, do you have questions that we can put to our panel that they might be able to answer? I'm not going, I'm not going to answer that question, okay. but I'm going to just put something else out there, which I also sure. think is very um, interesting. Do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, sorry. Yes, sorry. I'm okay. Nina Fros and Pretorius, and I'm representing um, ICA. Okay. The other thing I think that I think we, we've headed into schooling and where we're going with smart kids is I think one of the other challenges that we face, not only about making children do homework and sit in their chairs, is actually dealing with children, not perhaps special needs, but you said that you were dyslexic earlier. I don't know if you really are dyslexic, but if you are dyslexic, it's extremely challenging mm -hmm. in the current school environment. I have a son that is dyslexic. And that, if you're dyslexic, you have to be intelligent. And you look at um, Albert Einstein that was sent home. And so potentially, how do we garner the information and intellect and potential creativity of different people and different individuals that can add such tremendous value to our society in the current education system? I don't, I don't think you're okay. gonna be able to answer that. But I think that's something that educators and governments need to grapple with because if we lose that potential mm -hmm. um, source of the youth, yep. those could be the people that come up with wonderful ideas. So your brain might work, and I know that we've got someone from the, the brain or the research, Brain Research Institute, is your brain might work in a certain way and you can develop the space shuttle. Um, but your brain might work in another way and you might be able to do something else. Yep. So that I think we're losing a how lot do, of potential. How do we potential. get everybody's potential from that perspective? Yep. And yep. can you speak to that, Dr. Abdullah, and link yep. it back through to associations? And what could the role be of yep. both so uh, school and edu uh, education associations? The key there is, I mean, and it's two key words. One, personalized learning and experiential learning. We all learn differently and we are all having different interests. So now for us to do that, you cannot rely on a single teacher who's trying to teach 20 kids, thinking they are all identical, the same, because that's the time span that he or she has. So what we envision sometime down the road is associations, freelancers, coaches, trainers, whatever you call yourself, is I will work with the students one-on-one. -on -one. I know their ability, I know their interest. Maybe I want to teach them math but not through a book, but check your interest. You like football, yeah. So let's talk about football and how the scoring works and whatnot. So I think this is where you individualize, but you also uh, have the learning part of the exper uh, experience, the learning. And at, at your pace, you adjust. So this will go down to having the learner chooses who to learn from, what to learn, how to learn it. So this is down, I mean, hopefully down maybe three, five years from now, and, and you see some places like in UK right now, there's many of these apps, Tutor Fair, for example. You know, you go and sit, and you actually don't, it's like, it's like Uber, right? Okay, I see a picture of Samantha, and you know, she is a mountain climber, and she's doing this and this and this, and she also does this. So 
I will look again and say, I want to learn from you. This. So, the, what, for that to happen, we need, the, we need this to switch. We need Aliyah to choose. From whom, what, how she wants to learn, and when she stops, and she, want, when she wants more or less. So, but this requires everybody else. This requires we parents, teachers, coaches, uh, to help Aliyah. But, I mean, we all talk about student-centric education system, but it's only the title. But actually, it's <laughs> student-centric, right? I mean, so... Um, no, I mean, I think this is just, this is just to answer your question, it's just, this is where we're heading to, and I think in Dubai we are very fortunate as, as a parents, because you choose, the state have not chosen to you where your kids go to school. You choose among 200 different schools in Dubai, that is of 17 different curriculums, of different price point, and different location, and different buildings, you get to choose, you get to choose. But the, the thing we found out is, Parents are not used to make that choices. Mm -hmm. We know how to buy a car, the difference between <laughs> this car and that car, right? Or brand or something. But when it comes to making choices in education, how do we choose? How do we procure the service? So I think as much as we're trying to educate uh, Ali and the team, you have so much choices, but are you making the choices? I mean, you talk no. about dyslexia, yeah. There are few schools that does it very well, but might come at different price point, right? Or different locations. So um, I think we're, we're lucky to have all these choices. Mm -hmm. I think what I see forward is because of this choice, because of the competition, a lot of these innovations we are talking about, not only the schools will do, but asso associations like yours will come on board and say, okay, we want to help out in here. Yeah. And maybe the associations could be providing some of those choices that allow the youth to pick something and understand what's happening with brain science or understanding what problem you're solving in the insurance sector or how you might be doing something else. There's another question at the back of the room. Can I just add Yes, you can, please. Yeah, Aya. so um, about the whole choosing your own school, I think that comes with a price as well of having, for example, I go to a school that I'm very, very happy with. I love my teachers and I love my, my, um, my friends in class the principals, everyone is super supportive. But the one thing that is hard is that there aren't many options out there. There aren't, to be honest, there aren't many options that would tell you, for example, you want this really good school, but sometimes it could be very good in English, but very lacking in Arabic. You want this really good school, it's really good in Arabic, lacking in English, and not teaching another language. You want this school, not focusing on, you know, there are yeah. different schools mm -hmm. that have different approaches to things and, and then at the very end you don't have many options to choose with depending on where you live and where you go. Um, but I think something that my school just did recently was introduce something called electives. And these electives, they give you the chance to choose your own classes and I think that's uh, obviously happening Heading in, in the right schools. direction. Yeah. yeah, and but the different thing is that you get to sometimes choose your own class. You get to make up your own class and suggest it to the head of section. And then if they like the idea, they would actually apply it. And um, for example, last year, I suggested if we can have AP classes. And What's they were AP? like, yeah, um, advanced placement. It's like a higher level class. Okay. And they thought of it, and they were like, that's a really good idea, and started implementing it. And I think that's what's... Uh, schools should do, start taking ideas from students, what they want to learn, and start making their own curriculum for them. Every single student to have their own curriculum. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. One question at the back there, and then I've got a couple of points I want to, to put back to the panel. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Trevor Stockbriggs. I'm the managing director for the Energy Institute here in the Middle East. Uh, we're a hundred year old association uh, based in the UK, so we have a long history. What we do, going back to your original question of how can associations get uh, youth involved, um, we do, we, we actively uh, promote having students uh, as part of our uh, uh, committees. Um, one thing that, in particular, the, the, the Institute affiliates itself with universities, and we have a number, number here in the UAE and others around the world, and um, we, we give the students, student membership is free. 
and then when they're a graduate, the membership is a little bit, and then when they get a little bit higher, the membership is a little bit more, and eventually it leads them on and into their full professional career. So you're, 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 you're pulling those, those students and the youth into an association. Uh, but for, as an example of how do you involve them, uh, recently we, we tasked, tasked the, the, the committee, which and particularly we chose all, all the younger ones, to say what's a new communications uh, method? We need a new communications plan. Now it's okay, I, I pick up a phone and that's, that's me, I'm a dinosaur. But we, we tasked them and said, how's the best way to communicate with our membership both here and internationally? And, and they went away and came back with the plan. And in, the, these plans include everything from Facebook, Twitter, da, 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 all the things that the youth know and enjoy, social media. Uh, so we said, that's great, they did the presentation and now we're starting to enact that. So that was just a small thing, but, but to involve them, they loved it. They thought it was great. They had mm -hmm. the responsibility and they came back with the plan. We are enacting it. Okay, so that's just an idea, okay? Thank you, How, uh, that's a really good point. How many of your associations in the room actually have youth on your board, in a committee, or something like that, actually involved. And, and not pretending that we, of course, are youth as well. Dr. Abdullah and I thought we were youth. Really? Uh, and Alia was the super kid. But um, how many of you got youth involved in your board or on your membership committee? Okay. So maybe it's an idea we can all start embracing and, and making sure that can happen. Um, two final points that I want to get before I know that um, we need to finish our time. You're working on an experiment. Yeah. Will you tell us a little bit about the experiment? And I don't know whether you can tell me the results now or I whether I still am not allowed to know what happened. <laughs> I can tell you about the results now. Okay. So um, the experiment was mainly about a protein that protects our body. It's called heat shock proteins. And uh, these proteins, they protect our bodies on Earth from heat and different chemical and environmental stresses. And so I wanted to see if it would also protect us in space and whether we can detect that change in protein expression in space rather on Earth. And so I won with that idea um, and it sent my experiment to the International Space Station um, from a competition called Jesus Space. And my experiment was sent to the International Space Station. It was done by astronauts and I was able to have the results back. And the results so are, <laughs> they are that we can detect genes turning on in space, which we, yeah. <laughs> Which, <laughs> Which to me means, <laughs> yeah, so it means that, right, um, a lot of you might say, what's the importance of this? Imagine that we are living on Mars mm -hmm. and we want to do an experiment to see uh, there's like this weird pathogen or bacteria that we don't know about and we want to see if it will affect us and if it's creating this protein that is changing something in our bodies. So how do we do that? This experiment showed us exactly how. And um, it's, it's very technical on the way that we did um, to study the protein expression in space, but we do know how to do that, and that's fantastic, Alia. Well done. <laughs> Literally changing the world and changing what's happening. Dr. Abdullah, one of the things we spoke about just before we came on stage was about the consensus that you're doing and how to get inside of the youth's head to a certain extent, where do we go next? What's yeah. the plan? Maybe you can share that as a I final comment. I think the plan, and, and, uh, look, I'm going back to where I started. I think, you know, education was trying to so much to fill our head with, you know, math and science and whatnot. And I think if you look down the future, you know, most of these jobs will be done by robots or AI, artificial intelligence. And I think maybe now they're just doing the repetitive job, but in the future, they also do the cognitive job. It's, not, it's just a matter of time. But I think what we are going to focus on actually is the well-being mm -hmm. of the kids in the school. That's very often forgotten. So we started a project for the next five years. We started it last month in November, and we're finishing December. We'll be announcing that about February, which is a well-being census among all the schools in Dubai, but targeting 10 to 12 years old for the next five years, so we follow them to the high school. And trying to, to ask the question, what makes them happy? And when we started last month, I visited some of the schools, and you know the first thing the kids told me? Well, how come nobody asked us that before? I mean, we ask them, are you happy, and then we move on, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are, yeah. are you happy, and we move on, yeah. No, but, but I, think, I think the point here is, 
in, in our generation, we, we, we raise on, on, on the conventional wisdom that says, you know, you work hard, so you'll be successful in life, and then you'll be happy afterward, right? <laughs> because life was tough. Now, for this generation, you've got it all. You've got the houses, the cars, the food. You actually, you're trying to eat less. In our generation, we actually were starving. We wanted to eat more. So, it's the, so we still can keep the conventional wisdom, but reverse the order. Start with happiness. Because if you are happy, you will work hard and be successful in life. And if you are happy, you will go to school, you will do better, it will bring out the best out of you. So this is where we're coming with now, with, with, with the senses of trying to see what makes you happy. And, and, and think there will be some schools that will compete with each other, say, oh, well, you know, bring your kids to us, you'll be better. So we focus on the well-being because we think all of the other skills whether it's the, the math, the, this will be done by robot and AI. But robot and AI will not do what you do. Being, being, you started saying, I am passionate. So the, the robot won't have that. You have that. And I think with, with this will being senses, I think when the results come out, a lot of the association around here that works around will being will find a, a scientific report now from every school said how, the, how well they are doing in the well-being of the and start working programs to improve that. And I do, I do feel this is, this is very important, especially here, because in UAE, we have a minister of happiness and mm -hmm. we focus on well-being. Our prime minister says, I want to have the happiest nation. And full stop. He didn't say why. He didn't say because you can know. Because there is an intrinsic belief that if you are happy, everything else works. You have less crime, you have this, you have that. So happiness and well-being is very important to us. And that's something we will be uh, trying to, you know, major mm -hmm. and report out on. Fantastic. Ali, I'm going to ask you to close out with a message to the associations on how they can engage you and all the other super kids out there um, to get involved in associations and to volunteer effectively your time, your brains, your passion and your energy um, to associations, what would that message be? Um, as I started off before talking about how important hope is, mm -hmm. I think that hope is very important. And I have, uh, I have came across a lot of people in my life where I told them about what I do and what I want to do, and they told me, you're 15, you can't do that. You need to wait, you need to graduate, you need to do that. And I think that needs to end. The fact that people, they, 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 they don't have hope in other kids. Um, my age and even younger, that they are able to do these jobs, that they are able to come up with new ideas. And I'm sure that a lot of people still think that, whether they think that, no, we don't think that, but the actions that are happening, um, I'm sure a lot of associations are putting in the effort to bring youth into their companies and their associations. And I think that's really important that we even increase that. Because if we look at the proportions, in my class or in my grade, grade 10, there's no one who's part of an association. There's, so if you look at that, okay, you are providing jobs, you are doing that, but is anyone, does anyone know? Mm -hmm. Are you promoting it well enough? Does it become the norm? That's the questions you should ask. Fantastic. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Dr. Abdullah and Alia al And I'll lead you back now. You've, you've given us hope. <laughs> and actually, the fact that I probably need to stop my job. Yeah. Um, right, let me um, ask you to join back here, and I'm going to welcome on our next speaker. Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure to meet you. Good to see you again. Outstanding. Fantastic.